Well, good evening, my beloved. We are here again in a brand new month. It's amazing how time is just whisking by. We're in the month of July already, which means half of our year is gone. And I pray that we have used that time wisely uh, to grow up and grow in, in our work and our love for God, our work for God, and just not took it for granted that tomorrow is promised, but just use every day to the best of your ability to serve Christ. We're going to do a new topic tonight. We're going to begin talking about regeneration. We referred to it several times in our past studies as we studied the fruit of the Spirit, but we'll get in depth into it in depth tonight. We'll begin talking about regeneration. But let us look to the Lord in prayer at the beginning. Father God, we come before you again tonight. We just want to honor you, God, because of who you are. We thank you, Lord, for your love, grace, and mercy that you so richly bestow on us every day, Lord. Your word tells us that new mercies we receive every day. And had it not been for mercy and your grace, Lord, we would not be here tonight studying this word. And we know that no matter what we go through, God, that your grace is sufficient. So we praise you and thank you for your word, for it is it is it is fertilizer to our lives, Lord God, that we grow through your word. And in tonight's study, God, I pray that you will open up our hearts and our minds, God, to the, a new topic as we talk about regeneration and the importance of the Holy Spirit and how he endows us through regeneration to be the people that you have called us to be. And again, God, I pray for every family that's tuned in. I pray, God, that you will be glorified by what transpires here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to begin our study, as I said earlier, of, on regeneration. We have alluded to regeneration in our past study of the fruit of the Spirit, and that's attained through regeneration. So we're going to spend some time talking about what it is and how it works through the Holy Spirit. But we're going to use as our basic scripture, it's only mentioned two places in the Bible where it's written out regeneration, but it's implied in other places. But you'll find the word regeneration in Matthew 19.28 and Titus 3.5. And we're going, to, we're going to use Titus 3.5 for our basic scripture in this lesson tonight. So go to your Bible, go to your page of con table of contents if you need to find Titus. It's, it's towards the back of the Bible, uh, comes right after 2 Timothy, you'll find Titus. And Titus, we're going to be reading verses, one verse, just one verse, Titus 3, 5. And again, I am studying from the New King James, but whatever translation you have will be fine. Okay, so Titus 3, 5 reads, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's our, that's our ba basic scripture for our regeneration study. Now, the spiritual change, regeneration is the spiritual change that's brought about in a person's life by an act of God. As we've just read, it's not what we produce, it's by an act of God. And in regeneration of persons, God will take our sinful nature and change it. Your sinful nature is changed, and we are then enabled, are able to respond to God in faith. Amen. And so we're going to start tonight's off story off, the lesson off by talking about generator. Because generate, generate is the root word, root word for regeneration. And what a generator does in a car, and that's its functions in your car. And I know for my son that, Today, they're called alternators instead of generators. So what does it do? What does it do? How important is it in your car? And does your car still look like a car when the alternator or generator is not working? So the root word for regeneration is generate, which means to cause, it means the cause of a situation, action, or state of mind. Let's say that again. Generate means to be the cause of a situation or state of mind. And the reason I brought this topic up is to help us understand that without regeneration, a Christian may look like a Christian, like your car doesn't change, it still looks like the same car it is, but they're not going anywhere and they're not growing. 
and without your alternator, your car might look like a car, but it's not giving you any service. It's not doing what it's created to do. And that's the same way with regeneration. And as we read in Titus 3, 5, uh, we're going to unpack that scripture and help us to better understand the process of regeneration. Amen? Because there is a process to regeneration. And in Titus 3, 5, regeneration is the process of and, the, and that's used to express the concept of a new life, a new birth, new spiritual resurrection, and the new creation. And in general, it's a reference to uh, the new supernatural life that believers receive as sons of God. Now, two words in there I want to explain to you. The process means that it's a series of actions or operations so the, 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 the regeneration is a series of actions and things that, uh, of actions and operations that produces an end. That's what the process means. And then that word express simply means to symbolize. And so in other words, regeneration is uh, the actions that symbolize uh, the concept of new birth, new resurrection, uh, new creation, uh, in, and in general, it's a reference to, our, as I said before, our new supernatural life that begins, that, that believers receive as sons and daughters of God. And it means the origination of eternal life in which comes into the believers in Christ at the moment of faith. So the moment you say yes to Christ, the regeneration begins in your life. You open your will to God to follow him and to believe, allow him, as the word says, uh, not with works of righteousness that we have done. It isn't anything that we do, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration. So we think in terms of washing, washing, what does it does? It takes what's out that's, that's dirty and been used and it's no longer in, in, and it's taken away from the whole item or whatever you're washing and it cleanses. So regeneration is a cleansing process by which God takes out the old and replaces it with the new, which enables us to, again, I'll go back to our Fruit of the Spirit series, enables us to actually embrace the fruit of the Spirit because now we've been regenerated and we're following the will of God. And it's instantaneous change. It happens when you say yes to Christ. And it changes you from a state of spiritual death to a state of spiritual life. That's what regeneration does. Now, and it's by way, so how does this happen? How does this regeneration take place? We just said, we just read, we're going to stay on this scripture quite a while tonight because it says it's not by works of righteousness that we've done. So we can't produce regeneration on our own. We can't be so good in and of ourselves that we just going to produce all this. No, you need to be able to, first of all, give your will to God and allow the Holy Spirit to do his job in your life. And it's much better than we can ask or think. And so when we give ourselves over to God, it's through his mercy. And how many of you know that it's because of his mercy that we're even here? It's because of his mercy. And because of his mercy, he saved us. And how did he save us? Through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. So it's through the Holy Spirit. And it's evident... Uh, Throughout the spirit, throughout the uh, the scriptures, that the Holy Spirit is truly, truly, deeply involved in our salvation. The Holy Spirit is deeply involved in our salvation. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to bring about uh, the necessary change in our nature, so that we can become all that God wants us to be. So this is a, a threefold lesson. It's talking about our salvation. It's talking about the Holy Spirit. It's talking about being regenerated. And all of that is for our good. Christ gave us the Holy Spirit so that he could be here to teach us all the things that we need to know. And so it's, it's the job of the Holy Spirit, again, uh, to bring about the necessary changes in our lives. But we have to be open to it. The, 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 uh, the privilege to be changed comes when you say yes. But still, we play a part in it when we are, are obedient to God and allow him to work in our lives. Amen? So it, it's a twofold thing. And the Bible speaks of this change in terms called being born again. 
I know you've heard that term many, many, many times about being born again. A few years ago in the 80s or 90s, that was the topic that everybody talked about, being born again. Well, there's a process to it. There's a process to it, and we're going to talk about that. What does it mean to be born again? And, and it's necessary if we're going to live the lives that God wants us to live, we must be born again. Now, I uh, ask John, actually, do I re-enter? I mean, not John, but um, uh, his name escapes me now. Nicodemus asked, do I enter again in my mother's womb? And, and Jesus explained all that to him in the first part of the book of John. And so uh, just like we've been born physically through the natural process, we can and we must be born again spiritually. Let's, let's go to John and find for ourselves where Jesus is having this, this powerful conversation with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus, of course, was really a, 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 Pharise, a famous Pharisee, and he was following Jesus, and he was doing all the things that he was supposed to be doing. But he, did, he needed to be informed about the new birth. And so in um, John 3, 3, Actually, let's start at John 1.13. John 1.13 says, We who were born, we were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That speaks about our new birth. That you're not born of blood, or the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. Now, when we get to John 3.3, 3, uh, after Nicodemus had asked him, uh, how, how can this happen? And Jesus answers him in John 3, 3, he says, And Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And so he answered, he answered him. He answered him, how does this happen? And Jesus answered, you must be born of the spirit, which brings up the point of being regenerated, being made new by the auspices and the works of the Holy Spirit. And John 3, 3 through 8, what we just read, it emphasizes uh, the sovereign role of God in bringing about the experience of regeneration. And as we said, and we read again in Titus 3, 5, which we will read over and over again, uh, that regeneration takes place in the soul. It, it, it's, it's who you are. It's the real you where the regeneration takes place. And we're going to now go back to Titus 3, 5 because we're going to spend some time there because I want us to understand the fullness of what regeneration means and that we cannot produce regeneration in and of ourselves. And so it's how does this happen? Uh, the regeneration process is accomplished by the Holy Spirit. We just read that in John 3, 3 through 8, and then in our main scripture, Titus 3, 5. And so um, it takes place in the soul. Mercy is from God. Love, kindness prompts our faith. Can you hear the fruit of the Spirit in that? So mercy comes from God, and love and kindness prompts our faith. And Paul's intent here, when he talked about uh, re regeneration in Titus 3, 5, it, it, it is to explain or describe God's saving mercy independent of any merit by man. So you, you can't do this your own. You can't make yourself to be mature. You need the Holy Spirit in your life leading and guiding you through the new birth process. Turn with me to Ephesians 5.26. But keep your keep your 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 your, your bookmark in, in uh Titus. So Ephesians 5.26. Okay. Ephesians 5.26. And why does this happen? That he might sanctify and cleanse us her with the washing of the water of the word. So there again we see that evidence of regeneration comes by, comes by uh uh, washing of the regeneration of the word. Amen. And we know how important the word of God is in our lives as we allow ourselves to be regenerated, to allow ourselves to go through the process. We need the word of God 
in our lives so that we may be able to do those things that we that we we uh, ascribe to do and that God wants us to do. And so, and it says that it saved us. And again, we see that also in, in Titus 3, 5, that he saved us. Now, saved us applies fully to those who are regenerated alone. If you have not been saved, if you have not allowed yourself to be saved by the auspices of the Holy Spirit, you can't claim that you've been saved by God. You That happens when you say yes and your heart is towards God. Your heart is towards God because you have this overwhelming desire to be born again and to do the things that God wants you to do. And once your heart is open and you know God knows our heart, we say that often and it's true, it's really true, he does know our heart. When we say that and we mean that, God gets to work on our lives, regenerating us, washing us and washing away all the filth and the old stuff. And the old habits are replaced by new habits and you have a desire to want to please God when you have been regenerated. And when God saves us, and another thing about regeneration that we need to understand, it's a thing that's once and for all that's done, it's done. But the renewing is a process, a daily, pro a daily process of, that's, that proceeds, uh, uh, that, a daily process, I should say. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 4.16. 2 Corinthians 4.16. Okay, I'm going to go back past Galatians to 2 Corinthians. Uh, what is that? Verse 416. And it says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So you see, when you are under the process of being renewed day by day, you might not look like it on the outside. You might look the same, but your inward man, the real you, who you are, is being renewed every single day, every single day. And so renewing is progressive sanctification. It means that every day that we wake up, we're being renewed in the spirit. We're being renewed here. We're being renewed there. And it's not something that we can put our finger on and say, oh, I was renewed here yesterday. No, the Holy Spirit is so awesome and God is so sovereign that as the renewal takes place, you wake up and you realize that, well, I haven't said a foul word in a week. Or I haven't talked about anybody or gossiped about anybody. And I, I just feel good about myself. That's the washing and the regeneration of God taking all that filth out of our lives and replacing it with the fruit of the spirit, which we just studied a couple of weeks ago. And so that's how it happens. Now there is definitely, uh, uh, as the washing is connected with regeneration, so is the renewing of the Holy Spirit is connected to uh, shed on us abundantly. In verse number six, look at us. whom he has, verse 6, still in Titus, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ. And so when we say he poured out us, on us abundantly, it means that we he has just overwhelmed us uh, in his way of overwhelming us without us even knowing it because he wants to give us an abundant life, an abundant life. He wants our renewal to be total and complete. And we cooperate with him because we've given ourselves to him to clean us up and to make us new, thus being born again, whom he poured out on us, talking about the Holy Spirit, abundantly through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen? And so that's our, our first part of our lesson on regeneration. And so what we're going to talk about now, very briefly, we're going to talk about, we're going to ask ourselves, well, why is regeneration needed? And I think we, we've talked about that very briefly that it's needed because there's so much in us that needs to be changed. And so there's no doubt that man is in need of being regenerated. Amen. Uh, uh, turn to Romans 5, I mean, 8, 5 through 8. Romans 8, 5 through 8. Romans 8, 5 through 8.
And it reads thusly, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the thing of the flesh, things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So you cannot work your own works by yourself. You need the Holy Spirit. And that word carnal in verse 7, what does carnal mean? Carnal means that we are in a state of mind where everything we do is, 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 is done by flesh. It's done out of our flesh and all our, our worldly appetites or desires rather than to have godly desires and spiritual desires. And the basic human nature is carnal and it's sold um, out in sin and having this realm here on earth. We live carnal lives. And so that's why the need for regeneration is so great. And the need for the experience of regeneration is apparent from our sinful condition. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So we need to understand that human beings must have a radical change because there's so much, we're so, uh, we're so tainted by the world's ways. And, and I, I find myself, even uh, being a, a, a born again believer, some things that we would frown upon years ago, it's, it's so put out there in such a way now through commercials and even through some teachings that we've just become so accustomed to it till we overlook it and it doesn't bother us anymore. And so we are, we are like on the verge of accepting worldly stuff, even though in your heart of hearts you know it is not what God desires, but you, you, you find yourself beginning to be softer and softer on the world's ways of what happens. And that's why we need regeneration, so that God can, can protect us from the devil having access to our minds to bring us to the point in our lives where we just accept things that we know are not of God. And so that's why we need uh, to, uh, to, to have our minds clean. And, and the, the change is called a radical change because it, 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 it changes your personality. And God promises to do that through regeneration. And then only the Holy Spirit can open our eyes and convict us of our sins. It takes the Holy Spirit to make us see where we are in terms of our regeneration. Okay, okay. And the Bible says that the carnal mind is hostile towards God and unable to please God. And so sometimes we struggle as believers and and, and things in our lives, like I said, so many things that are happening now that we would have frowned upon years ago, but now it's beginning to be, look, we know it's wrong, but you just say, well, well, God will straighten it out. But we have to keep that stance because we've been washed and we've been protected. And the Holy Spirit, when you're washed and regenerated, he will not allow Satan to feed that kind of nonsense in your life without giving you a defense in, your, in what you truly believe. Amen? And so, though sometimes we struggle, we need to seek to move towards holiness and Christ-likeness. And, and this means that we are continually, continually living in conflict with the tendencies of the flesh. The flesh is going to always be there. And that's one of the things that we try and teach because uh, with the flesh, you're not going to ever get rid of the flesh. He's going to always be present. Amen? And so, we find then... Uh, Go through, go back with us to John 16, and we're going to talk about what it means, how the Holy Spirit will open our eyes and convict. We're going to find out what that word convict means. Uh, to John 16, 8 through 11. John 16. Let's go there. Okay, John 16, 8 through 11. And again, again, uh, we see the job of the Holy Spirit. John 6, 8 through uh, 11 says, and when he, talking about the Holy Spirit, has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, 
of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. And so Jesus Christ is, is warning us that he is sending the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's job will be to protect our, our minds and our hearts so as not to allow Satan to soften our stance on what we know is right. So that's how much God loves us, that he sent the Holy Spirit because we were in such need of, of, of regeneration. He sent the Holy Spirit to do that, to, to, to wash us and wash away all those doubts and, and things that we talk about. And every day, we, even as Christians, we grapple with things like jealousy and strife and lust and selfishness and pride. And at the same time, we can learn if we desire to walk by the Spirit who then empowers us to set aside these fleshly desires, like I said earlier, we do that through the word of God. In our last scripture we will read today, we'll talk about conviction next week when we come back. But I want us to go to Galatians 5, 16. We, we're back and forth. Can you see that? So these pages are really being unstuck today. Galatians 5, 16. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So when we walk in the spirit, which means when we allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, we won't be quite as tempted to walk in the world's ways. The Holy Spirit is there as our protector. He's there as our guide, but we have to give him permission. He won't force himself on us. But when you know that you need to be born again in order to enter into the kingdom of God, you open yourself up to the teachings of the Holy Spirit and the washing of regeneration, which is our main scripture in Titus 3, 5, because it's not because we cannot do it on our own. We can't get ourselves together. You hear people say, as I prepare to close, you hear people say all the time, well, when I get myself together, no, you, that's, that's, that's not your job. Your job is to give yourself over to the Holy Spirit. And we're going to close with our, our scripture. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. So you can't produce this on your own. And it goes, but according to his mercy, he saved us. How do you do that? Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which means we have to open ourselves up to the guiding and the leading of the Holy Spirit every day. It might be a good thing that you start your days off praying that the Holy Spirit will guide you that day and that you will be obedient and humble enough to listen at him when he attempts to guide you. Amen. So that's our lesson for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to have a couple of uh, more good sessions on regeneration. We're going to talk about the need for regeneration. We're going to talk about uh, the results of regeneration. And um, we, we will all be regenerated because the word of God says uh, unless we are born of the Spirit, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And so that regeneration prepares us to walk in righteousness and walk in the light and be a candidate for eternal life with Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us pray. Father God, again, we thank you for this time we've spent together. Pray, oh God, that words were said and encouraged so that we would know that we, you did not desert us, that you left the Holy Spirit here to teach us and guide us so that we would know what it is that's required of us to be what you want us to be and to be able to live eternally with you. That's all of our goal, Lord God, to spend eternity in your presence. And so I pray, God, that hearts were pricked and understanding was given so that we would know that being born again means that just that, that we start afresh. And that's done because of your mercy, through your mercy, that you save us. And you wash us through regeneration by the Holy Spirit. Bless and keep us now, we pray. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night.